Hello, I'm Paul Weston. Uh, okay, I really, I really wanted to talk about um, how Sadiq Khan, or how a man like Sadiq Khan could ever become um, an elected representative of an English city, and more to the point, how he could possibly become the chair of the C40's Cities Scheme, which is a, a global network of 100 city mayors who are all promoting the Green uh, New World Order. And Khan's posturing with his ultra-low emission zone, or ULEZ, is, is nothing to do with air quality and everything to do with totalitarian government or global government. But before I get on to that, though, I need to, I need to finish what I started in my previous video uh, where I outlined his behaviour prior to becoming Mayor of London. And this video is about his, his anti English pro-Islamic extremist behaviour after he became mayor in 2016. Now, every year in London, uh, an Al-Quds Day march is held, and this is a, an anti-Israel pro-Palestinian event. It's held globally, and every year in London, the Hezbollah flag is flown, uh, despite the fact that Hezbollah is a genuine a heavily armed Islamic terrorist organisation, and it's prescribed in most parts of the world. But in London 2017, um, the London Assembly member, who was in UKIP at the time, David Curtin, who's a great chap, by the way, uh, asked Mayor Khan why he allowed Hezbollah flags to be paraded through the streets of London. And Khan replied... It was not within his remit to ban Hezbollah, and, and uh, this was a matter for the Home Secretary alone. So Curtin then suggested that uh, that being the case, uh, might not Khan consider writing to the Home Secretary, voicing his concerns. And Khan replied quite disgracefully that there was, quote, nothing stopping you from writing to the Home Secretary, obviously talking to Curtin. Uh, thereby implying that he, Khan, had no intention of doing so. And when further pressed by Curtin, uh, Khan stated that he might read up on it and he might consider doing something about it, possibly at some point in the future, or as Sir Humphrey Appleby might have put it, uh, in the fullness of time or at the appropriate juncture. Now, a link to the full video of this Astonishing verbal exchange is in the description box below, uh, but here's a snippet uh, which should be turned up to full volume to decipher Khan's sort of mumbled, jumbled and questionable command of the English language. Mayor's question time last year on the 20th of July, I did ask you about that, whether you would call for the political wing of Hezbollah to be prescribed and you would probably need to approach Amber Rudd, the Home Secretary, to do that. And you said, no, that's not what I've committed to, to do. But in the light of everything that's happened this year uh, and what you know now is maybe more than what you knew 11 months ago after a year in the job, I want to ask you again, Mr Mayor, will you call or do anything to ask and see that the political wing of Hezbollah is proscribed as a terrorist organization in this country because that will close the loophole that stops people marching through the streets of London with a flag with a gun on it. Well, there's nothing stopping you writing to the Home Secretary. I will, and I, I hope you sure will wish you me success. Yeah. But you, as, well, the, as the mayor, uh, are in a very, very powerful position. <laughs> if you do this, it will be a very powerful well, voice to can stop can this, I, loop, to close this loophole. I've read your letters setting up the evidence. Uh, I'm sure I'll consider whether the right and top secretary is the right thing to do. Now, Khan's words and attitude suggest that he has no intention of pressuring the Home Secretary whatsoever. Uh, so nothing further need be said about this, uh, other than the clear, undeniable fact that Khan has no problem at all about genocidal militias prescribed across most of the world, uh, casually walking through the streets of London under the eyes of Khan's Metropolitan Police, which is an outfit as useless uh, as it is politicised. Yeah, dear. Now, in addition to this, Khan claims London was built by immigrants and desperately needs more of them. Uh, although I don't suppose he means white ones or non-Muslim ones. And he's upset, apparently, about the sheer, the sheer number of annoyingly white men on the tube, although he neglected to mention if this only occurred at specific times of the day, such as rush hour, for example. And Khan heavily promotes black cultural events, uh, financed by his office, 
yet he goes out of his way to attack our culture and our heritage uh, via the toppling of our ancestors' statues and the renaming of our streets and the decolonization of our institutions. So in other words, he wants to airbrush us out of historical existence. Now, Khan also supports the whole LGBTQ jamboree T as well, which, uh, which some might think odd considering Islam's particular take on homosexuality. But Khan is probably practicing takia here, one imagines, which is the Islamic art of deception, because it's a matter of historical record. Uh, a matter of historical record, get your train of thought, uh, that despite a spirited uh, defense by Mayor Khan himself, uh, Khan's pet speechwriter, who's a friend of Khan, uh, was eventually sacked for public, uh, publicly exposing his traditional Islamic views on homosexuals and women in general, uh, describing them on social media in terms not dissimilar to those utilised by popular rap musicians such as Mr Ice Tray uh, and the mischievous uh, ditzy rascal. And it seems almost impossible that a man like Khan could wield the whip hand over London, as Enoch Powell might have put it, but wield it he does, and it's unlikely London will ever see a non-Muslim mayor again, not even a brown one, uh, let alone a white Christian one. And it would be a Herculean task to argue against the possibility of Khan being anything other than an English-hating monster. But in 21st century London, that's actually an, e an electoral positive rather than a negative. And to fully understand how extraordinary this is, uh, try to imagine what would happen to an English politician who espoused white supremacist, uh, pro-Christian, anti-Islamic views, standing for election in a predominantly English constituency. And he would be rejected by his fellow Englishmen, of course. Yet a man like Khan is not rejected in England, which rather proves the point that whilst the English reject white supremacism and extremism, the new non-English inhabitants of London positively glorify in Khan's anti-English hatred and Islamic extremism. And I'm sure there'll be a backlash at some future point. But at the moment, as of this moment... I think it is fair to say that, yea, verily, we are in quite a pickle.